New in vSphere 4.1 is a feature that allows an ESX or ESXi server to join the Windows Active Directory as a member server. This is super easy to do. Let me go over to my vSphere client and show you how to do this. I've used my vSphere client to connect to an ESXi server, but the configuration is the same and the feature set is available on all versions of vSphere, including the free vSphere hypervisor. So to do this, you would select the ESX host, and then go to the Configuration tab, and then underneath Software, go to Authentication Services. What we'll do here is go into Properties on the Authentication Services, and change this from Local Authentication to Active Directory Authentication. I'll type in the name of my domain here, and click Join Domain. Just like a Windows PC, when you're joining the domain, you have to provide the administrative credentials that has access to join a server to the domain. I'll enter those credentials and click Join Domain. And there we go. This ESXi server is now a member of the Active Directory domain, wirebraincoffee.com. I'll say OK there, and you can see Active Directory has now been configured as the Directory Services Authentication type. So how does this work and what does it allow us to do? Well, if we go over to our domain controller and look in Active Directory Users and Groups, here on my Active Directory domain controller, inside Active Directory Users and Computers, what we need to do now is to create a new security group called ESX Admins. That's because that's the default security group that this ESXi server is going to be looking for to authenticate anyone connecting to that server directly with the Windows Active Directory. To do this, I'll just right-click in here, and I'll go to New, and then down to Group. What we'll do is create a group called ESX space admins, and there needs to be that space there. It needs to look just like that. This is going to be a global security group. I'll say OK there, and then, of course, someone needs to be added to that group. So if I double-click on the group and go into Members, I'll click Add here. And I'll add myself. I do already have a Windows Active Directory account called David. I'll say OK there and OK. And now I'm a member of that ESX admins group. So I have the ability to administer that ESXi server using the vSphere client with the administrator permissions. So now let's test this out. Let's go back to my local computer and run the vSphere client. We'll log in directly to ESX server number 5. I'll log in as myself using my Windows Active Directory account, which is david at wiredbraincoffee.com. I'll type in my Windows password and press login. Now I could use the checkbox there to use the Windows session credentials if I was logged in locally to this computer using that Active Directory account. Okay, and here we go. You can see I'm logged in directly to this server. Look on the bottom right-hand corner here. It says wiredbraincoffee slash david. That's the account that successfully logged in. Now if we go to the Local Users and Groups tab, notice I'm not listed in here. My Windows account isn't listed in here. It's still just the local logins. If we go into Permissions, take a look at that ESX Admins group that's been added there. I'm a member of that group, and that's how I'm able to log into this ESXi server locally and administer the server. So that's what makes this possible. Everyone in the Windows Active Directory group ESX Admins has the administrator role on this local ESXi server and then the configuration over here underneath authentication services to point to the Active Directory as the directory services type. That's what connects all this together and allows me as a Windows user to log in locally and administer this ESXi server. I just showed you how to join a standalone ESXi server to the Windows Active Directory as a member server and then that gave it the ability to access the Active Directory. We went to our Active Directory domain controller, we created a new Active Directory group called ESX Admins, and I added myself, an existing Windows account, to that Active Directory security group. Then we proved that this worked by going to our vSphere client and logging directly into the ESXi server using my Windows Active Directory credentials. So now let's move on to how to assign a local role to an Active Directory account. Here in the vSphere client, we're still connected to this ESX server, and I'm still logged in as myself, David, who has the administrative role on this local server. 
So now let's say that there's an individual user or a group of users over in the Windows Active Directory that need read-only access to this ESX server. Let's say that they just need to connect and verify the status of a virtual machine or check some performance graphs, but you don't want them to have administrator access. Now that this ESX host is a member of the Active Directory, we can very easily assign whatever permissions and roles we want to Active Directory users and groups. To do this, I'm going to right click here and click Add Permission. By default, we've got the assigned role as read only on the right hand side. So all we need to do is to click Add here. And then notice I can change my domain to the Active Directory domain. Now I can select any existing Active Directory user or group. So let's say that Bob is the support manager and he needs read only access to this ESXi server. I'll select Bob and click Add. Now Bob's going to have that permission. I'll say OK there. Bob is listed here with a read-only role for this ESXi server, and I'll click OK. Now Bob has read-only access to this host. Let's test it out and make sure that it works. I'm going to run another copy of the vSphere client. Again, notice we're connecting to the same ESX server. I can type Bob's Active Directory username and password. And again, if Bob was logged on locally to this computer, you could check this checkbox right here, and he wouldn't even have to enter his Active Directory username or password. I'll click Login. And there we go. Notice on the bottom right-hand corner here, it says we're logged in as YBrainCoffee slash Bob. And if we went into, let's say, the Configuration tab here as Bob and went into Networking, Notice that we can't click on the Properties options or the Remove buttons. Those are all grayed out. If we went into Authentication Services, we can't change the local authentication. This is a read-only account that Bob's logged in with. So that just proves that we are able to assign individual Active Directory users or groups specific roles on standalone ESX and ESXi servers. So with that, let's go back to our slides. So I just showed you how to assign a local role to an Active Directory account. Now let's move on to how to override the built-in ESX admins Active Directory group. There may be some admins out there who are concerned about this built-in ESX admins group because any person who creates that ESX admins group in the Windows Active Directory and puts themselves in that group suddenly has administrative access to an ESX server. So let's say that we didn't want to use that built-in group at all and perhaps we wanted to add individual users or just not even use Active Directory authentication but still have our ESXi server be a member of the Windows Active Directory. Let's go back to our vSphere client and I'll show you how to do that. And here in the same place that we added the Active Directory user Bob as a read-only user, we can go into the ESX admins group here and we can right click on this and go into the properties. We can then set the role for this group to be no access and say OK. By doing that, no one in the ESX admins group is going to have access to this server. In fact, it immediately kicked me off because I was logged in with my Windows Active Directory credentials as a member of that group. So at this point, some people might be saying, uh oh, are we now locked out of this server because we set the Windows administrative group, our ESX admins, to have no access on this server, and that was how we were logged in. Well, don't worry, the root account is still available. The root account is not affected by any of this Windows Active Directory stuff. So all I have to do here is say yes, that I do want to log in again. I can log into the same server instead of using my Windows Active Directory credentials. I can log in as root. And there we go, we successfully logged back into the server as the root user. So the root user is completely unaffected by any of this, as are any of the other users that you might set up here in the local users and groups. So the Active Directory groups and users are in addition to the local users and groups that are already configured on the server. So to fix the problem that we just created, we could still go back here into the Permissions tab, and then I could go into the ESX Admins group that's set as No Access, and set this back to administrator. Now I can log in with my Windows Active Directory user account. On the other hand, if you wanted to completely disable that ESX admins group, you could set this to no access, 
And then let's say that Bob is now going to be the administrator. You could set the individual Bob account to just be the Windows Active Directory uh, individual user that can manage these ESX standalone servers without having to use the local root account. So the point is there's a lot of different ways to design this and you're not locked into that ESX admins group. It's just a feature that's there by default if you choose to use it. So what did we learn in this video? I showed you how to join an ESXi server to a Windows Active Directory group. You saw it's super easy. You just go into the Configuration tab, go to Directory Services, and add the computer just like you would any standalone Windows PC. We verified that that worked by logging in with my Windows Active Directory credentials. I showed you how to manipulate the built-in ESX admins group, as well as how to add a local role to an Active Directory account or an Active Directory group. And finally, we verified that the ESXi root credentials are still local and they aren't affected by any of this Windows Active Directory group. So you have that as a safety net in case any of this other stuff goes wrong. Thanks for watching this video covering using vSphere 4.1 ESXi Active Directory Authentication.